<laughs> How are you guys doing? Well, before we do our rock and roll faces, let's just fix this view real quick. Boop! Ooh, much better. Well, you guys know the drill by now. If you're ready to rock and roll, I need to see your best, your most rockinest rock and roll face on the count of three. All right, here we go. One, two, three, rock and roll face! Nice job, you guys! Well, welcome to 50s week here at Kid Row. And before we get started, we need to do a quick rock and roll call. So, when I call your name, I need to see your fist go up in the air and I need you to yell, backflips! Can we do that on the count of three, all together? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, backflips! Nice job, you guys! So remember, open up your ears and listen for your name. Can we hear it from Max? Hi, Max! Up next, we have Michelangelo. Hi, Michelangelo! Now, can we hear it from Mila? Hi, Mila! Up next, we have Otis. Hi, Otis! Now, can we hear it from Rain? Hi, Rain! Up next, we have Riley. Hi, Riley! And last, but certainly not least, can we hear it from Tuesday? Hi, Tuesday! Good job, you guys! Well, now that we know that everyone's here, let's get to rockin' and rollin'. Hey, everyone. We're gonna do a little freeze dance to Little Johnny Walker slash Little Sally Walker. So when I say, and do your thing and stop, you're gonna do your goofiest face ever for the first one. First one's gonna be Little Johnny Walker. You ready? Little Johnny Walker walking down the street. Didn't know what to do, so he stopped in front of me and said, Hey boy, do your thing, do your thing. Hey boy, do your thing, do your thing and stop. Blech. That's my goofy face. All right, now we're gonna do Little Sally Walker. For little Sally Walker, why don't we do a pig nose with buck teeth? Ready? One, two, three, four. Little Sally Walker walking down the street. Didn't know what to do, so she stopped in front of me and said, Hey girl, do your thing, do your thing. Hey girl, do your thing, do your thing and stop. All right. Now let's do Hey Johnny Walker. For Hey Johnny Walker, I want you to do a rock and roll face. So today mine is gonna be Ready? Hey Johnny Walker walking down the street. Didn't know what to do, so he stopped in front of me and said, Hey boy, do your thing, do your thing. Hey boy, do your thing, do your thing and stop. All right. Now it's time for Hey Sally Walker. What I want you to do on this one is do a spin and then a rock and roll face. I'm not gonna do the spin part because it's gonna be really hard. I'm gonna hit myself in the head with the guitar probably. I could bet on it. Ready? Hey Sally Walker. Hey Sally Walker walking down the street. Didn't know what to do so she stopped in front of me and said, Hey girl, do your thing, do your thing. Hey girl, do your thing, do your thing and stop. Good job. Nice work guys. On to your next lesson. Hey backflip, who is ready for a little hey lolly? Awesome, let's do it. One, two, one, two, three, four. Hey lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey lolly, lolly, oh. Hey lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey lolly, lolly, oh. This is a silly kind of song. Hey lolly, lolly, oh. You make it up as you go along. Hey lolly, lolly, oh. Oh. 
soda, sodas. Hey, yo, the soda, soda. Hey, yo, the soda, soda. Hey, yo, the soda, soda. Hey, rain, rain, rain. Hey, rain, rain, oh. Hey, rain, rain, rain. Hey, rain, rain, oh. Hey, Riley, Riley, Riley. Hey, Riley, Riley, oh. Hey, Riley, Riley, Riley. Hey, Riley, Riley, oh. Hey, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Hey, Tuesday, Tuesday, oh. Hey, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Hey, Tuesday, Tuesday, oh. Hey, Lolly, Lolly, Lolly. Hey, Lolly, Lolly, oh. Hey, Lolly, Lolly, Lolly. Hey, Lolly, Lolly, oh. Awesome job, guys. Hey, kid rowers, let's go over some vocabulary words. Let's start with one of our favorites, dynamics. And what's dynamics? The volume of the song. So when you get louder and softer and softer and louder, sometimes you might go medium even, like dynamics, like that. Or dynamics, like that. You never know, you could go either way, back and forth, up and down, left to right. Dynamics. Okay, time to talk about my favorite vocabulary word of all time, and that's stage presence. What stage presence, you ask? I can't believe you have to ask me that still. I'm gonna tell you anyway. Stage presence is how you present yourself on stage. So it's the energy that you have when you're on stage. And what you wanna do is present yourself as having so much fun and a good time and rocking out. Sometimes you could even be having fun with like rock and roll faces where you don't look like you're happy, but you are on the inside like, Arr! but inside you're like, yes, I love music. So for stage presence, you're gonna wanna like, when you're singing, you're gonna wanna make faces and fist pump and try all different sorts of stuff and maybe kick your legs, whatever. When you're also playing instruments, you're gonna wanna like, not just like play the guitar, but you're gonna wanna rock out with the guitar, yeah! Stage presence. So drums, you're gonna be going nuts, berserk, yeah! And for bass, you're gonna be like cool, boom, 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 slapping the bass. Keys, I've seen keyboardists do all sorts of creative stuff. I've seen keyboards play with one hand and then pump with the other. Whatever you're doing, you wanna seem like you're having the time of your life because you know what? You should be, you're on stage doing what you love, which is making music with your friends. So that, my friends, is stage presence. All right, friends, let's talk about tempo. Does anyone remember what tempo is? Totally, it's the speed. So it's the speed of the sound of the music. So it's the notes, how fast they're going. Usually your drummer is gonna count you in and that's how you're gonna know what your tempo is. So if it's like one and a two and a, then your tempo would be like If your tempo is more like one and two and it's gonna be like Huh, that's right. Whoa. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about song form. Song form is the different parts of a song and it forms a song. So you take like one part would be the verse and you would add a chorus and then you'd add another verse and it's starting to take form. And there's also the bridge. Remember the bridge goes from one idea over to the next. And sometimes those bridges are just music and they're just instruments, and sometimes there are words that are different than the rest of the song, but they connect the song together. So that's what a bridge does, it connects two parts together of the song. So you have the song form, the verses, the chorus, the bridge, the intro, all part of song form. Now we're gonna talk about genre or arrangement. Does anyone remember what genre is? No, it's not a French word. Maybe it is a French word. I don't speak French. But what I do know is that genre are different categories of songs and music. So for one, we have country music or classical music or like 50s rock and roll music is what we're gonna be learning a lot about today. So I'm kind of dressed kind of 50s, which is like a leather jacket, white t-shirt, jeans, pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy if you ask me. All right, you guys, now we're gonna do a quick recap on your vocab term tone. Now tone is the color of music. So even if I'm singing this one note, uh, it can have a bright color, 
Uh, or a dark color. Uh, now, why do we have tone again? We have tone because it's better to listen to a colorful piece of music than something that's just plain boring, right? That's why tone is so important. It's the color that we add to a black and white picture. So one more time, tone is the color of music. Can you guys repeat after me? Tone is the color of music. Nice job, you guys. So remember, the next time that you guys play a piece of music, think about tone. It might change the whole sound for you. All right, good job, you guys. And on to your next activity. This one's dedicated to all you rock and rollers at home because I'm sure you're being very good. This one's called Johnny Be Good. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, music history. So let's talk music history of the 1950s. So what was so exciting about the 1950s is it became the birth of rock and roll. That's right kids, the 50s was the time where it all started coming together. You had the king of rock and roll in the 50s, which was Elvis, Elvis Presley. He was the king of rock and roll and he was kind of the symbolism of like teen rebellion and that kicked off a whole movement of rock and roll music. And there were some other people who were part of that, which was like Roy Orbison or Richie Valens, Buddy Holly. But eventually, rock and roll also brought together this little group of four men who kind of were became pretty successful. Their name was, maybe you've heard of it, The Beatles. The Beatles came out of the 50s and they really were part of the birth of rock and roll and what you would start seeing is a lot of people imitating the Beatles trying to be just like them and there'd be a drummer and a guitarist and a bass player and a singer and they'd write their own music and they'd start out in garage bands and then they'd become really famous and have hits on the radio. Another part of the rock and roll movement was the R&B movement which also combined a lot of times with rock and roll. It was a very exciting time because all sorts of people were on the radio together and it was very exciting and some of the music just sounded so great. You had like Little Richard and Fats Domino and Chubby Checker, people like that. They were like putting out these hits and the songs were so catchy and a lot of times had a lot of harmonies which had more than one singer at a time singing either different notes that match or the same note in unison together. So another part of the landscape of the 1950s was 
pop music. It was what was popular, and that was more easy listening, kind of relaxed music that was about the lyrics. A lot of times it had a jazz influence. So like Ella Fitzgerald was the hugest jazz singer at the time, and she really brought jazz into the pop, into the popular culture. So did Frank Sinatra. Maybe you've heard of him. Also, Nat King Cole and Rosemary Clooney were huge pop artists at the time. So music was creating these legendary people that all these years later we're still hearing about them and listening to their music because the 1950s really, really influenced all the music that we listen to today and all the music that came after it. It's all influenced from the 1950s. And that's a fact. All right, repeat after us, band. A wop ba ba loo ba ba wop bam boo. Here we go. One, two, one, two, go. A wop ba ba loo ba ba wop. I can 
even make my own song. There are so many things we can do with the keyboard and it's awesome because it's all laid out right in front of us. It's so easy to learn and play and explore. So if you have a keyboard at home or a paper cutout of a keyboard, why don't you practice pressing the keys at different rhythms and playing around with different patterns and combinations of the keys that you could play together. And maybe try pressing down two or three notes at a time and creating some chords. Awesome, that's all for today, but I'll see you next week. All right, you guys, now we're gonna do a quick recap of the guitar. Now, do we remember how many strings a guitar has? Well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six strings on the guitar. Now, do we remember that phrase that we use to remember the different note names of the guitar strings? Hmm. I think it goes something like Eddie, eight, dynamite, good, by Eddie. Why don't we say that all together? Eddie, eight, dynamite, good by Eddie. Nice job, you guys. Now, do we remember the names of these different sections right here? These different sections, I'll give you guys a second to guess it. Do we remember the name? It starts with an F and ends with a et. Oh, to whoever said frets, you are correct. These guys are called frets. Now, the way we count frets is we start from up here and work our way down. So we would count fret one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say I wanted to find fret number 10. Do we remember where we find fret number 10? Well, let's count from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. There's fret number 10. Now let's say we wanted to find fret number six. Do you guys know where fret number six is? All right, let's count from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's fret number six. Good job, you guys, and that was the guitar. Now on to your next activity. All right, a little recap on the kazoo. Oh, not the drum set, that's what this is, the drums. All right, you've been learning about the drums for months now, so I know that if I hit a drum or kick a drum, you're gonna be able to name which one it is right away. So I want to either kick or hit something, and as quick as you can, I want you to say snare drum, or hi-hat, or kick drum, or whatever it is, and the quickest person wins, all right? The quickest person gets five lollipops when you get back in the room. All right. Here we go, ready? If you said kick drum, you are correct. All right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's right, it's the snare drum. Why is it the snare drum? Because it's got snares underneath it. All right, next up. If you said the ride symbol, then you are right. Next up, was that the snare drum, the kick drum, was that the hi-hat, or was that, what's this, sits on the floor over here? That's right, it was the floor tom. All right, you guys are doing good so far. Yes, that's right, I heard you, and that is the hi-hat. You don't really wear it as a hat, but it kind of looks like a hat if you look at it the right way. All right, we got a few drums left. You guys feeling like you're doing good so far? 50-50? Are you getting them all? All right, here we go. If you said crash, you are exactly crashly correct. We got one more drum. So you might even know what it is before I hit it. You ready? That's right, it is the rack tom because it sits on this rack here. So we have two different toms. We have the floor tom, because it sits on the floor. We have the rack tom, because it sits on the rack. That's right. So all together, we have a drum kit. Man, drums are so fun. Remember the most important thing about playing the drums? 
It's not to go all crazy animal, although that is fun to do, but the most important thing to do on the drums, it's two words, they rhyme. It's steady, teddy. So I want you to think to yourself when you're playing the drums that you're keeping it nice and even every time. Like when you're walking down the street, you're not like, and then, and then. You're going evenly the whole time so that everyone in the crowd can dance along to you. It's really hard to dance. So right now you can dance to what I'm doing, right? But it's really hard to dance hard. Right? That's why it's the drummer's job to keep it steady, teddy. So our beat for our song alternates between the floor tom and the snare drum. That's the, that's the number one way to play the beat. So can you play after me? You got your right hand and your left hand. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Keeping it steady teddy. And now we're gonna add the kick drum with the tom. We're gonna add the hi-hat. So you have to take your right hand and move it from the floor tom over to the hi-hat. Now we're really cooking. Now try and go twice as fast with just the hi-hat. And now we're ready for the stage. All right, the drum set. See you next week. Hey rock stars, does anybody remember which instrument is inside our bodies? That's right, it's the voice. Awesome, our voice is so fun because it's a part of us and we can take it everywhere we go and we don't even have to bring anything with us. How cool is that? I love to sing. Do you love to sing? Awesome. Okay, so now can we all Raise our hands all the way up to the sky and wake our bodies up. Ooh, stretch it out really good. Ooh, nice, awesome. It's very important that we wake our body up and get ready to sing so that we don't put too much pressure on our throat and strain ourselves. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick warm up. Can everyone say meow? Meow, awesome, just like a cat. <laughs> Isn't that silly? All right, so we are gonna go. Meow, 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 meow. All right, can you try it with me? Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Good job, guys. That was an awesome warm up. Okay, and it's fun because we can do it on any sound we like. We can say woof, 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 or oink, 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 oink. You can play around with it at home. We can use any syllable to warm up our voice. When we are getting ready to sing, it is important that we use our voice loud and proud so that people can hear us. So, can we all practice going, wow, you try, wow, one more time, wow, awesome. Sometimes it helps to use body motions to help throw our voice out and use it confidently. You should try it when you're practicing your songs. Maybe try using your arms to help you throw your voice louder and see if it changes the way that it sounds. Awesome, that's all for now. I know you guys are gonna sound great when you're using your voice today. Can you guys guess what recap instrument we're gonna work on today? Hmm, let me think. The bass, that's right. It's not an electric guitar, it's an electric bass. And the bass has how many strings? Not six, like the guitar, it has one, two, three, four. And then it has the same first four 
as a guitar, which is Eddie for E, 8A, Dynamite D, Good, he ate Dynamite Good, G. What else is similar with the guitar is it has this thing called a neck and these things called frets. And each fret sounds different when you're pressing on it. And that's how you get your different notes. And then at the top of the neck, you have these little cute things that you're not supposed to turn. Let the adults do that part. Eventually you'll be learning how to tune a guitar or a bass. And it's very exciting because then if you go out of tune, you know how to tune yourself without an adult. How cool is that? So this, my friends, is a bass. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I've been getting super silly lately. I've been in the house a lot more than usual, and it's making me a little cuckoo bananas, but in a good way. So I needed to rock my sillies out a little bit. You wanna join me? Come on, you wanna join me. We're gonna rock our sillies out. So first we're gonna headbang our sillies out. You ready? I'm gonna headbang, headbang, headbang my sillies out. Headbang, headbang, headbang my sillies out. Forward, headbang, headbang, Headbang my sillies out and wiggle my waggles away. Huh. Next up, we are going to stomp, just like if we're at like a rock concert, okay? First we headbang, then we stomp our feet. Ready? I'm gonna stomp, stomp, stomp my sillies out. Stomp, stomp, stomp my sillies out. Stomp, stomp, stomp my sillies out and wiggle my waggles away. Oh yeah. Next up, we are going to clap because clapping is a nice way to say, yes, I love that song. And you can cheer too, okay, you ready? I'm gonna clap, clap, clap my sillies out, woo! Clap, clap my sillies out, woo! Clap, clap my sillies out and wiggle my waggles away. And then the ultimate sign that you're into a song, besides head banging perhaps, is the fist pump. I'm gonna pump, pump, Pump my sillies out, pump, pump, pump my sillies out, pump, pump, pump my sillies out. You guessed it, and wiggle my waggles away. I still feel silly, but that's okay. Yeah! All right, I'm on the floor. That can only mean one thing. We, no, not I lost a contact lens and I'm looking for it. It's hammer time! All right, you ready? Do, 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 do. Get out your hammers. One, two, three, four. Now we hammer with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Now we hammer with one hammer all day long. Two. One, two, three, four. Now we hammer with two hammers. Two hammers, two hammers. Now we hammer with two hammers all day long. Three, you say? Hey, there's no socks on those feet. Whatever. Ready? One, two, three, four. Now we hammer with three hammers, three hammers, three hammers. Now we hammer with three hammers all day long. What I love about this song is that you get to really keep the rhythm and feel it in your body. So that means we should keep going, I think. So, doing hello over there, I'm a barefoot too. Ready? One, two, three, four. Now we hammer with four hammers, four hammers, four hammers. Now we hammer with four hammers all day long. Can you believe I'm bare feet? You know I love crazy socks. What happened to me? All right, we need another hammer. Let's use the noggin. Ready? Go! Now we hammer with five hammers, five hammers, five hammers. Now we hammer with five hammers all day long. Whew, that's the best head banging I've done all day. All right, it's time for the sixth hammer. 
Okay, you guys, you ready to jam out? All right, so can you guys say, where are the backflips? And this is, we're not gonna take it. Nice, now can you guys say, hit it, drummer. Awesome job. Here we go, one, a two, a one, two, three. talk about how to practice. Practicing your instrument and your song, whether you're the singer or you're the guitarist, is so important. If you don't practice, you won't know it. And then you'll get up on stage and be like, oh wait, was I supposed to do something? What was it again? Oh yeah, learn my song. Uh-oh. So what you want to do is you want to find time every day where you can do something, anything, to be practicing your song. It could be as easy as listening to the song a couple times, just over and over again. Really get it in your body, get it in your head, get it in your mind. It could also be picking up your guitar or your microphone or a set of drumsticks and practicing while you're listening to the song on the radio or iTunes, whatever you use. You could listen to the song over and over and play along with it and that starts helping you practice. You could even, if you really think you can handle it, you can practice without listening to the song and have the song in your head and play that way. But what you have to do is you have to practice every day in order to be able to really get to know the song so that when you get up on stage, all you're thinking about is your stage presence and you're just letting your body just go into the zone and just play your song, okay? So practice, practice, practice. Practice makes progress. All right, back flips. Let's see who came to rock today. We're gonna start off with Max. Ready, Max? One, two, three, four. Who came to rock today? Rock today, rock today. Who came to rock today? Max came to rock. Nice job. All right, Michelangelo, you're up. One, 
What's up, dudes and dudettes? It's your boy Bear here at the Kid Row headquarters. I had so much fun rocking out with you guys today and learning all about the 50s. Now it's time to get creative and draw your records. Hey, did you guys know that rock and roll started in the 50s? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, we'll see you next week on Zoom. I can't wait to see your beautiful faces. In the meantime, don't forget, the best way to practice is to listen to your songs. Listen to your songs and listen to your parents. Alright, sayonara!